and uh, very good afternoon everyone and thank you uh, for joining this results call uh, as we normally do i'll provide a, a perspective of our results that we announced last evening uh, and then we'll open up the line for q and a now as as you may have seen in our published results our net sales in the third quarter was adversely impacted by the expected route to mark, market changes in certain states and to a lesser extent by the residual effects of the highway ban in fact over the last 6 months there have been rtm changes like jharkhand chatisgarh uh, and that is now behind us and it's happened west bengal that is just getting completed as we speak in fact calcutta metro is just transitioning and haryana and punjab which had an impact in the quarter and up that is likely to happen so you know if if we exclude the rtm states particularly in the last quarter our underlying sales in the rest of the country remains strong and i'm pleased with the sales that we are getting from the other states now haryana and punjab as i said were the ones that were most impacted and most impacted the revenue this quarter uh, haryana specifically issued a notification changing the distribution of alcoholic beverages to a corporation model which is a government corporation model effective 1st april 2018 uh, in light of this expected change we as a company took the call to make sure we prioritize credit risk over sales risk which means we put emphasis on making sure that we control our credit and start collecting money from many of these private parties who will not be in business from the 1st of april and that's the philosophy that we pursued and we believe that that was the only prudent thing to do during this quarter now during uh, due to these short term headwinds underlying net sales declined 2% Uh, and these route to market changes also impacted the prestige and above segment the most where underlying net sales declined about 1% in the quarter now despite a muted top line performance uh, i am particularly pleased with our gross margin improvement now this is something that we have been trying to fix for a long time and we believe more than any other indicates the health of our portfolio and business this has allowed us to significantly increase marketing investment by 27% and thereby invest in the future so we delivered 373 bits underlying gross margin improvement during the quarter fueled by more extensive price increases and more than half the states have given us price increases this fiscal premiumization and accelerated productivity including the mitigation of gst staff costs were lower by 7% uh, benefiting from the savings delivered by the organizational changes that i have spoken about to you on past calls uh, the underlying underlying abida margin was 13% 13.1 to be precise broadly in line with the previous year and this is after the higher amp spend and after taking a prudent approach on provisions given any future risk on the rtm transition um, we have continued to focus on reducing debt and interest costs were lower by 29% i'm also happy to share that recently usl made its maiden issue of ncds of 750 crores so as to refinance existing high cost debt this will help to further lower interest costs in future periods we're also pleased with the enhancement of our long term credit rating to aa plus by crystal you may have seen that we have reported 13 crores of exceptional charge during the quarter this one off charge relates to manufacturing unit closures and reflects our continued focus on further rationalizing and optimizing our supply footprint profit after tax for the quarter was down 9% due to the lower net sales and as a result of the high investments and provisions which we have taken in order to protect the future of this business as we had outlined earlier we do not run this business on a quarter to quarter basis 
we rather manage this on a longer term basis, but at the minimum on a full year basis. Just to very quickly then summarize our performance in the nine months of this fiscal, underlying net sales declined 2%, with the prestige and above segment growing 1%. And this was significantly impacted by the highway ban during these nine months, and then the expected RTM changes, which have happened more recently that I just shared with you. More extensive price increases during the year, continued focus on premiumization and accelerated productivity has led to 301 BIPs gross margin improvement, which stood at 47%, which we believe is really healthy and kind of in the zone that we want to be in. This, together with lower staff costs, has allowed us to increase marketing investments by 13% in the nine months and led to an underlying EBITDA margin improvement of 73 bits to 13.2%. Interest costs were lower by 29%. This coupled with lower exceptional items has resulted in overall PAT increase of 28% over the nine months. Looking ahead, while the adverse impact of the highway ban is behind us, we do expect to see continued impact of route to market changes in certain states, as I mentioned earlier, in this financial year. Importantly, we now expect that the adverse impact of GST will be more than offset by productivity savings and pricing. Finally, I do want to say this, that while we are not happy, and I know that many of you might have had some concerns with the soft top line, you know, I really do believe that we have never been more confident about the current health and the future of this business. We have overcome some of the biggest headwinds that had the potential to not just derail this company, but to derail this industry, and we are past those. And we have come out much stronger for it. We are therefore committed to investing in the future and some of the decisions that we've taken this quarter are in line with that perspective so as to realize our medium-term ambition of double-digit growth and mid to high teen margins. With that, I'm going to open up the lines uh, for questions, which uh, I and our CFO, Sanjeev Churiwala, will jointly address as best we can. Over to you, please. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the attached tone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Participants are requested to limit their questions to two per participant. Time permitting, you may come back in the queue for a follow-up. We will take the first question from the line of Manoj Menon from Deutsche Bank. Please go ahead. Hi, hi, team. Uh, just, uh, the one question on the gross margins, uh, you know, are, what I understand is that the underlying 373 BIPs improvement includes the franchise fees which we collect, uh, which in my understanding, again, uh, you know, is more like an annuity. So how should I think about the medium term once the, uh, you know, the one time, I, I would call it as a one time impact of this franchise fee, which comes in, which kind of uh, comes into the base, because after that it grows at, uh, you know, if I remember correctly, a, a mid single digit number. Uh, so essentially trying to understand the drivers for further gross margin expansion. Uh, you know, I understand the top down premium, but are there any bottom up? If you have the numbers with you, you will see the gross profit stood at 41.5%. Uh, in the next one, nine months now, our gross margins 
uh, 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 47.4%. So within the next, in the nine months, we have seen our gross profit margin enhancing overall uh, by about 600 bips point. Uh, this is on the on, on the reported basis. Uh, so absolutely, there have been some impact because of the movement of the franchisee, wherein the top line net sales has gone away, and 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 to that extent, uh, we we see in place uh, the franchisee income coming in. And we have very clearly called out that purely on account of uh, uh, the, the franchise that we see we have about close to 160 bips uh, impact because of the franchise. And, and that's the underlying performance that we're talking about. Uh, but when you look at our gross margins evolutions, I think it, it, it's perfect, right? Uh, uh, we have seen a big productivity improvement coming in uh, over the years, uh, very clearly. Uh, GST impact, we said, is uh, subdued, is, is more than, uh, you know, offset by productivity uh, as well as price increases. Uh, our franchise business uh, actually going as per our, our planning overall, right? Uh, if you look at the other shape of the of the PNL item, our overall staff cost, which was about 7%, remains almost flattish at 7%. Our A&P spend is as per aspirations of about close to 10%, right? And our other overheads, uh, it's about 14.5-15% uh, all. So overall, as compared to a, 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 a EBITDA margin of 9.4% which we had for F16, we are standing currently for the nine months at 12%, which is about 260 bips improvement in the, in the EBITDA margin. I don't think a year back, you know, we were always talking about this. There was always a question about our gross margin enhancement and our OP margin enhancement. Uh, so I think we are really delivering on ambitions on pricing, productivity, mix, and overhead improvement. Uh, we are now not a million miles away from overall aspirations of mid to high teen margin aspirations. We have really demonstrated in the next last nine months a very steady improvement in our gross profit margins and in our EBITDA margins. Uh, that should, uh, Manoj, answer your discussions on the gross profit as well as overall margin mix. Sure, yeah, and just, sure. to, just to emphasize our... Um, Underlying gross margin improvement of 373 bips is without the franchise benefit, okay? Yeah. So that's underlying to the business. Okay. And the other thing I just want to just uh, add to what Sanjeev, Sanjeev just said is, if you look at every line item of our P&L, right, it's moving in the right direction. It's in the direction in which the strategy of the company um, is, is we, if we have wanted to drive. There has been a top line impact this quarter, which we recognize. But if you look at every other line of the PNL, it's moving in the direction which we would like. Understood, understood, and that, that's very helpful. And all the best for this. Uh, secondly, quickly on the uh, input costs, uh, you know, uh, allow me to say that uh, there is a general consensus expectation that uh, you know input cost corrections, ENA price corrections, uh, you know, could potentially lead to uh, you know margin expansion. Of course, that's the job of the analyst to figure this out. But just from your perspective, uh, you know, how should I think about figure help us in terms of because historically, uh, you know, input costs would have been volatile in terms of, uh, you know, inflation as well as deflation. Uh, you know, is this really an important source of funds for you to say that, uh, you know, if input costs indeed, uh, you know, get into a deflationary cycle, uh, that does gives the liquor industry, the alcohol industry, uh, you know, a lot of sources of funds uh, to reinvest? Well, let me just say this, first of all. So we have been in a relatively benign uh, commodity environment. And when I say relatively benign, it has been less than general inflation, and it's been less than the inflation that we forecast, forecasted in our p &L for the year. And that has helped also drive the gross margins. Now, you know, in this game, it is really hard to say uh, what's going to happen because, um, you know, uh, if we could do that, we'd all make a lot of money together. But uh, I think our view is that there will be some or could be some hardening of commodity prices as we look into the next fiscal. In fact, that's what... We are expecting uh, that there will be some hardening and we are trying to work around how to mitigate that to continue our journey of protecting and even building on our gross margin. So that's how we are approaching it. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Arnav Mitra from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. The first question was on the growth itself. Uh, so, uh, if you could help us get a give a sense uh, that if these route to market chain states like Haryana, Punjab, uh, West Bengal, uh, excluding this, uh, what would be the range of growth that you would have seen in the rest of the country? Uh, 
uh, and uh, is it uh, an acceleration over the growth that you saw in the second quarter? Uh, why I ask that is this quarter had demonetization as a base, so there should be a low base effect, and gradually the highway ban effect should also be going away. So uh, just wanted to get a color on the uh, relative trends also between 2Q and 3Q on a YY basis. So there are many moving pieces, uh, both in the numerator and in the denominator, right? Denominator, as you rightly said, uh, there was demonetization in the base, and therefore it was a relatively softer base in terms of purchase and consumption. But equally, you know, we pushed very hard during that quarter just to make sure that, you know, we get the maximum that we can um, uh, at a time when there was a lot of instability in the market. And when you look at the numerator this year, obviously there are these RTM changes that we are uh, that we are experiencing. If I looked at just underlying performance outside of uh, the RTM states, we have built momentum over quarter two, right, in terms of our growth rates. And actually, I'm quite pleased with the levels of growth. I don't want to give a number there, but I tell you, we are pleased, we have built momentum, and we are pleased with the level of growth. So if this RTM uh, changes had not happened, I think you would have seen a set of top line numbers that have been far more in line with what you would have expected to see, right? The gap has been because of this, and we always knew that these changes are going to happen, and we as a company have uh, played cautious during these RTM changes because recognize there is a lot of debt and therefore credit risk uh, with these wholesalers and in this industry uh, when rtm changes happen parties disappear huh? and then you can keep fighting them for as long as you want to recover your debt uh, but you know then good luck to you with that so we have taken the call right and that's ultimately a management call right uh, thanks for that. Uh, the other thing you had said is that you have made some provisions for the RTM changes. Could you just throw some light on what uh, what what kind of provisions and are they booked somewhere in the PNL? So uh, that provision would appear in the other overhead line, but if you really compare the overhead line as compared to the previous corresponding quarter, you will not see a major deviation because we've really been managing our overall overheads, uh, you know, far better than the inflation outlook, right? But yes. Because of the prudent accounting policy, we did have to provide some some provisions which is appearing in the other words. Thank you. We will take the but next. We've been prudent, huh? just to say this. We have been prudent on this, right? We could have taken the easier way out, but we have played prudent. Uh, and again, that's management philosophy and a management call. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Avi Mehta from India Info Line. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, sir, just wanted to clarify this RTM change that you had mentioned about Haryana, Punjab, and West Bengal. Uh, has Punjab also you have done a similar exercise, A? And B, would it be fair to assume that this impact of this RTM change should moderate from the current levels? So, absolutely, it's going to moderate from the current levels, right? So, Haryana was the most significant impact in this quarter. Punjab was an impact, but to a lesser extent, right? And, you know, the, the nature of this beast also is that, um, uh, you know, we're waiting for formal government policy and on things like this, policy also changes sometimes. So there is a there is an impact that's in the quarter. Do I expect a, a big impact on Haryana in the next quarter? I expect a much lower impact of Haryana in the next quarter. All right? Because we've taken a big impact uh, in this quarter, right? And we've reduced uh, sales. Now, Punjab may be a little more in the next quarter. UP could be a bit more, but UP is still a little blurred in terms of what is the government going to do? Is the monopoly wholesale system in UP going to change to a government corporation or a multiple wholesale uh, model? Okay, But the reality of RTM changes is it is a matter of three to four months. Post-April, I expect all these markets to stabilize and actually once that happens, we should actually see very strong performance coming back in each of these states. Because there's nothing fundamentally wrong with consumer demand or pricing or anything of that kind. Right? There's no fundamental issue. The issue is just the shock that's happened because of a structural change in the route to market in terms of how the product flows. And you know, as long as consumer demand is intact, as long as we are investing in ANP, which we have done, then the demand for our brand should remain strong and the business should bounce back. Perfect, sir. Perfect, sir. This this is helpful. Uh, the second thing, sir, on the margins side, uh, could you kind of share how the ENA prices have been behaving now? Have you seen a moderation in ENA prices? 
uh because telangana uh, price hike has not yet come but i just wanted to kind of also understand from the ena point of view is that benefit also likely to flow in going forward why do you say telangana pricing has not yet come sir i would have thought that it is not flown through to margins completely in this quarter of course yeah of course of course not but it's been announced yeah yeah sir i i meant i meant right, you're aware of that correct right, sir <laughs> okay no i thought you had some inside information about what it was no 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 sir no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Sanjeev, you want to talk a little bit about commodity and ENA? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Abhi, I think uh, instead of talking on one particular commodity, let me let me just focus on the overall input inflation. Uh, I think we have very very clearly called out that while just like every other industry players, there is an inflation that we have uh, uh, to uh, to manage uh, every year, which could range from you know depending upon how subdued the overall commodity is from two percent to four percent on average. But what we we are very very pleased about. that given the extensive price increases that we had this year in the 9 months almost more than 50% of the state have given us price increases they have never seen uh, seen this happening in the in the previous years plus the kind of productivity that we have delivered to the business both this put together is more than offsetting uh, the overall uh, inflation that we have and that is clearly reflected uh, in in the gross margins improvement that you see so just simply you know we have mitigated more than 100% of inflation through our internal productivity initiatives right now having said that uh, ena has been benign relatively benign um and i think it's continuing that way right but our teams believe it's going to harden like i said earlier um but that's where it is uh, right now we thank you we will take the next question from the line of jamshed dada boy from city group please go ahead yes sir a couple of uh, housekeeping questions um one is your tax rate seems a little lower this quarter is there anything to call out or read in that effective tax rate sanjeev yeah so yeah i think uh, tax rate is definitely lower but you know i would not look at it you know quarter on quarter because depending upon the tax assessments assessments the tax planning it 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 will keep on moving uh, you know from quarter to quarter what you really see is a uh, effective tax rate being 2% lower i will not really uh, you know get into complete <laughs> uh, scrutinizing the itr rates but we are really doing a lot of tax planning and ensuring that our effective tax rates are lower than the statutory tax rates so what's your sense on what your full year tax rate could be if you don't match well, for your purpose of your competition i think you know keep it simple just plan on basis of uh, the statutory tax rate and then the, our intention is to ensure that we are lower than that okay second question could you so if i look at your 9 month or ytd numbers in terms of revenue growth or asp growth for the prestige plus segment it works out to it works out to roughly a 50 rupee increase you know per case basis about 3 and a half percent increase um within this Three and a half percent increase. Could you give us some sense in terms of how much is price and how much is mix? Because I know there's a structural, you know, uh, upgrading trend which is happening uh, even within the Prestige Plus segment. But I'd just like to get some, you know, more uh, granularity or color in terms of how much has just been the price effect this year. Because as you said, this is, you know, more than fifty percent of the states have. given your price hikes and it's something which you haven't it's it's kind of unprecedented no so just uh, so within pna i i think you could assume that uh, the 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 large part is price or pricing right or you know optimization of other moving pieces in terms of taxes and so on given pre and post gst um the i think that would be the lion share right now what has negated the thing a little bit is the state mix because uh, you know haryana and punjab are high margin states relatively and since those have had an impact right so that's affected mix because mix is not only um, uh, brands within the pna portfolio it's also about state mix right and that's had a bit of an adverse effect so i would say to keep this simple assume that the last part of it is to do with pricing thank you We will take the next question from the line of Amit Singha from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, would you like to share a particular number of the provisions which you uh, mentioned? Uh, uh, so I think uh, I did mention that uh, provisions uh, is reflected in the other overhead line, 
And when you look at the other overhead line, it shows about 4.8% increase, which is more in line with the inflation. Uh, so while we have provided for, for certain provisions on a very prudent basis, uh, we, you know, we would not like to specifically call out the number, and you understand why. Sure. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, secondly, sir, on the on the RTM uh, changes uh, specifically in Haryana, Punjab, and UP. Uh, how, so you have clearly mentioned that uh, from April onwards, you think everything uh, should normalize and sales should come back to normalcy, etc. Uh, just wanted to understand, uh, will it? Uh, I mean, how would the working capital uh, behave from uh, from here on? I mean, I understand at this point of time you have credit focus and you are recovering your credit uh, from from the private parties. But once it gets to uh, the government or uh, the corporation model. Uh, would you assume that the working capital cycle will uh, be uh, similar to what we had in the past uh, from FY19? So if I understand, you have two questions. Uh, the first question is, we did have RTM changes happening that will continue to impact to us in the current quarter, which is January, February, March. Uh, and of course, the answer is very simple. Uh, as Anand said, our secondary are really looking good. So barring the RTM changes, we are very happy the way we things are moving. So I think our, our, our prestige and above, which remains our focus, we will definitely continue to focus in growing that as double digit. There's no question about it, and that's our focus area. Uh, coming to the working capital, while for, for December we do not do not have to really report our uh, uh, on the cash flow on the balance sheet, uh, but we have been extensively working on the working capital. Uh, for December, our working capital numbers have vastly improved in the last nine months, and we're very sure going forward as well, while we will have pluses and minuses, because of the RTM, we will continue to manage our working capital very tightly. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Mayur Gathani from OHM Portfolio. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Just one query. I don't know whether you mentioned this or not. The other overheads have gone up from 300 crores to 390 crores quarter on quarter. So what has led to this significant increase? So when we look at uh, overheads, uh, the best way to really look at is the nine months overhead rather than just looking quarter on quarter because you will have pluses and minuses within the quarter. For the nine months, our overall overhead has gone up uh, by 2.1%. If you look at the absolute overheads, we are at about 1,000 watt crore, 1,031 crore, similar to about 1,000 watt crore in the last nine months, almost flattish. Uh, that I agree, sir. I, I take that point. Um, just wanted to check why there's so much of a difference on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Uh, anyways, and any guidance, uh, sorry, on the advertisement side, it's 10% is what you would look at on a yearly basis for this year as, would you consider the same next year also? Yeah, so our ambition is to spend about 10% on ANSP, double-digit uh, ANSP growth. And if you look at our uh, YTD this year for nine months, um, it is of that ballpark. Okay, <coughs> it is of that ballpark, give or take a bit. So this quarter has been higher, uh, but then this quarter is the most important quarter for our industry, right? Okay. Equally in this quarter, we have also introduced a new brand, which is, uh, uh, well, didn't introduce in this quarter, but this was the main quarter for that brand, which is Captain Morgan. And uh, I'm very pleased actually with how Captain Morgan Dark Rum, which has been formulated for India, uh, with how it's doing and how it's done, particularly in uh, November, December, and how it's going in January. And uh, the whole effort here is to premiumize rum, where there has been no real hard uh, intervention to premiumize rum like has been done in whiskey. So, uh, and we put NSP behind that too. Okay. And, uh, sir, coming to the other uh, expense, so the provisions that you've created have been added over here, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and these are provisions that you're just prudently taking because of this RTM changes? Absolutely. Okay, and we can see that coming in quarter four also because in case it will be Punjab and then UP as well, so to some extent. Well, we don't know. As Anand has said, you know, our, our effort is to uh, really minimize our, our credit losses in this market. And that is why we ensure that we, we have paid back our sales in this market and really focusing and managing our credit very well. And we are really managing it every day. And we have to really see how the team changes behave uh, in the coming months. Yeah, and those provisions can move plus and minus. Huh? I mean, we might be able to release some of it because of the decisions we've taken on how to manage credit versus sales. But then another state may open up in the next quarter. But, you know, so this is going to happen. And uh, over the next three months, four months, five months, there will be these pluses and minuses. 
uh, till the new uh, RTM stabilizes. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Ankit Panchmotia from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, this is uh, regarding this RTM change. So we have cautiously tried to focus on credit risk rather than sales risk. So just wanted to understand the impact of the same on the market share. How, how uh, with adopting this strategy, we would be maintaining our market share or there would be some sort of market share loss with this strategy going forward with the, for the next quarter as well? No, no. So, so let's be clear. Uh, short term, during the period of the RTM change, there would have been some market share loss because we took a call of being conservative in how much stock we want to push versus how much of all the outstandings we are collecting. And we actually sold to uh, many of these syndicates and wholesalers only based on how much they were willing to give of old outstandings back to us. Okay. So the short term, um, yes, there will be some market share loss. But what have we done? Our growth drivers in terms of investment behind brands right, is intact. In fact, we've stepped it up nationally. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to make sure is that the equity for our brands and demand for our brands doesn't fail mm -hmm. or doesn't reduce in any way, but strengthens. So the moment we are done with this, right, I hope that we will be in a stronger uh, position. So we're trying to, you know, maybe walk and chew gum at the same time, not lose money through credit risk, but also not lose any long-term market share. Some short-term shocks in market share, yes, that's part of the strategy that we have adopted, which we believe is wise. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and sir, any update regarding the non-core assets, uh, how, uh, uh, where have we reached or how are we planning for uh, complete FY18? Uh, any update on the same? Yeah, so uh, we, we, have, we will continue to maintain our stand that we do have plans uh, uh, for about 2,000 odd crores of asset monetization over the next three to four years time. Uh, because of the demonetization, we did see temporary blip where we were not able to really uh, improvise on our non-core sell assets. But I think we already now see some traction happening on the ground. For the, for the nine months uh, ending uh, December, uh, we already see a non-core monetization of about 60 odd crores, which has given us a cash of 60 crores and it's reflected in terms of uh, profit and other income of about 46 odd crores. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, just two questions. Uh, firstly, on these route to market changes, uh, what are you picking up? Uh, have the other players in the industry also, uh, you know, uh, behaved in a prudent fashion? And uh, you mentioned uh, some, uh, you know, near-term market share losses. Does it mean when the markets move to corporation model, uh, you know, it will be, you know, you will move back to your prior market shares? So, as far as the other companies are concerned, I think I will ask them. Um, but our observation is that we have been a little more cautious than others, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, so, so recognize when we talk market share right now, I'm not talking tertiary or consumption share because we don't have the data. What I'm talking about is primary sales share. And that's based on how much we're selling in, not how much consumers are pulling out. And because we are selling in a little less, there is a short-term erosion of primary market share, okay? Now, therefore, I'm not saying for a moment that our consumer market share is actually declining at the same rate or is declining at all. Therefore, when this funny in the middle goes away and we come back to a corporation where we have smooth sales then happening, and actually I must say one more thing here. I actually believe that corporation is not a bad thing at all, huh? Corp syndicates and management of wholesalers and the margin that they take away, I think is um, not as good for smooth selling and for ease of doing business as a good corporation is. And we have very good corporations which are absolutely painless and clinically clean and compliant to work with. Okay, So I think that the move to corporation in some of these states that have been controlled by a few wholesalers and a few big wholesalers will actually be better. So once we get into smooth selling, which a corporation should bring in, I mean, I believe we, we may or may not have lost consumer market share at all. Uh, and even if we've lost something in the short run, the investments we're making in equity, I think will help us to bounce back very quickly. 
Sure, this is very helpful. And and lastly, um, you know, in your core markets like Maharashtra and Karnataka, uh, have you sensed any change in the competitive activity on the ground? Uh, so competitive activity, uh, I would say, has been quite intense. Um, and it's always pretty intense in this industry because, you know, by and large, it's just a couple of players playing in a segment of the market, right? So uh, it tends to be a two-horse race, generally speaking, in most segments of the market. Not the same, same two horses in every segment, but typically about two horses in every segment. So it has been um, fairly aggressive. We know that in terms of advertising spends, and I'm now talking about ATL, right, our brand extension advertising that we do, uh, we have been very competitive, right, and our share of voice is absolutely intact and competitive over there. On the ground, short-term spends in terms of uh, trade and consumer promotions, like giving a freebie with a bottle and stuff like that, I think there has been some intensification of, um, of short-term activity by some of the competitors, uh, right, and these things happen month to month. All I can tell you is that, um, uh, with the ANSP as the way we are planning it, we have the purse um, to uh, invest aggressively and not just defend, but be on the offensive and build share. And that's exactly what we're doing. So um, I feel quite confident about the investments we're making and the activities that we have, um, that we will stay very, very competitive. Sure. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Chetan Shah from Jeet Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, sir, uh, thank you for all the updates. I have a very specific question about the future strategy. If you can just throw some light on that. Uh, you spoke about premiumization of rum uh, uh, versus how it happened in whiskey. So could you just give us some flavor about your thought process, uh, where you want to focus on in next three to five years uh, without naming any specific brand and all, uh, uh, it will be really helpful for us to understand uh, the big picture situation for the company as a whole. So, um, so first of all, you know the guidance that we've given in terms of uh, making sure we get to double digit growth in, in the medium term. If you look at our strategic priorities, um, our entire focus of our brand, which is uh, a fraction of the brands that we own, is about investing in those brands, making them stronger, and uh, ensuring that the more premium brands grow faster than the ones below. So we expect that each segment of the market, if you price segment the market, that each segment will grow faster than the segment below it, right? And that's how premiumization is happening. And, uh, and we have seen that happen, and you can't read that on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis. You have to read that on a longer-term basis, because there are lots of shocks that happen uh, uh, in the short term. So our strategy is absolutely about uh, premiumization, right? And uh, and that's been part of our philosophy of also franchising our popular business so that we can focus on the prestige and above and focus on the premiumization uh, agenda that we have. Uh, other elements of our strategy include being able to shape how this industry is seen and how we can create ease of doing business for this industry by making governments and consumers alike celebrate responsibly, right? I, I think, you know, responsible consumption of alcohol is very high on our agenda. And if we're able to land that, I think pricing and uh, uh, regulation will ease, right? And that's uh, to our advantage. We will continue focus on uh, enhancing margins by aggressively driving productivity and savings. And the intent is to mitigate a large part of inflation every year so that pricing and other things can actually help to drive our gross margin which can fund our investments in brands uh, and in stores and finally to have an organization that is fit for purpose that is not just ready for today but that is ready for tomorrow and have an organization with the right spans the right layers and the right culture all right so i mean this is about all i can do in a short call like this but uh, this gives you a picture of, of really what we're trying to pursue uh, thank you for uh, uh, such a brief and a uh, broad overview. If I may allow to ask one very specific question. When you talk about sir, premiumization and we see the mix of our total revenue, both in terms of volume and also volume share and also the uh, top uh, in a value share do you have any 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 big picture in mind that in five years from today or or ten years from today x amount of uh, volume 
or X percentage comes from a premiumization product category versus what it is today. Any roadmap or something, if you can share, that would be very, very helpful. So two years ago, the contribution of our prestige and above business was 50% in terms of NSV to the total. All right. Um, today, it is two thirds almost between 63 and 65 percent of our businesses prestige and above. I believe that as we go into the future, prestige and above will become 75 to 80 percent in the fullness of time because prestige and above will grow many times faster than our popular business. So, you know, as we look into the future, the future profit pool of this industry will be in prestige and above, and the lion's share of our business will be in prestige and above. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Pulkit Singhal from Motilal Oswal Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, I have two questions, sir. Um, one is, uh, while you talk about double-digit growth for net sales. I mean, when we look on a nine-month basis, it's actually a decline of 2%. So we as investors are looking at growth at sales as well as profit at EBITDA, but uh, you know, margins can go up without giving much of EBITDA growth. My, I'm just trying to understand, for the last two quarters, you have sounded very optimistic, and uh, but the numbers are not necessarily reflecting that. So what is it that we are missing? If you could share some anecdotes on the ground that could give us a sense of good consumer demand, that would be helpful. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, it's very hard to answer this question without just doing it a little philosophically. If you look at what this industry and the company therefore has come through, right? Um, I mean, have we created an environment for just normal consumer consumption and purchase, uh, starting from demonetization to the highway ban, uh, to the shock of GST that happened, where which was complex for us to do. And then following up on that are the route to market changes. Now, all I can tell you is this, that uh, this has always been a complex regulatory environment. And it was actually tougher a couple of years ago when we started our journey in India. But it has started easing. And, um, you know, these things, shocks will come and go. But... You know, I, I cannot, uh, you know, think of how we can have uh, double-digit sales if we are going to have these short-term headwinds and short-term changes happening. Now, all I did say in my opening remarks was, if I leave out states where we've got these RTM changes, we're actually delivering strong growth and building momentum versus the previous quarter. Now, those are states where there is no shock and where we're able to do business as usual. And if you step back at a macro level, the fundamentals of our industry, the per capita consumption, the progress in GDP per capita. And, you know, if you then were to use other countries as lead indicators, India cannot but deliver strong volume and value growth in the fullness of time. It is just the nature of the consumer opportunity based on people entering the legal drinking age and the disposable income and the breakdown of attitudinal barriers towards alcohol. So this is a short-term set of shocks, and you're not able to see that in nine months, and I get it, right? But there is a long-term opportunity, which whichever way you look at it, you cannot run away from. Now, the question really is, are we going to have a period of stability in this industry where there will not be short-term shocks? I believe it is there and it's around the corner. But even after the last quarter's results, what I told people is that in this industry, never say never. Things happen, and the only way is to change the narrative of how alcohol is seen by regulators and by civil society. There is no other short-term answer to this question. So, you know, when I say that we will deliver double-digit growth, uh, you know, in the medium term, I absolutely believe it, right? And I'm delivering that kind of growth in states where I have stability. So, you, you know, you, I mean, that's the, that's the way this industry works. Sure. I mean, this second question, um, and this is particularly re relating to popular segment, which is 36% of your revenues currently. Uh, one is, uh, what really is your strategy there? I mean, uh, I understand that you franchise out certain part of the business, but even from the existing business, it seems that uh, you're losing competitiveness out there. So is this something you just want to make to zero? Or, uh, or I mean, then you might as well just sell out the business. A uh, second part to that observation is we are really seeing a lot of these competitors, the people you franchise it out to, get into that segment uh, and, and possibly 
the competition is increasing in that segment. And maybe four or five years down the line, they start going up, you know, starting to premiumize their own thing. So how do you look at vacating that segment as it's creating competition out there? So, you know, I'll have to say what I've said in the past. Um, vacating the segment is your understanding of it. It's not my understanding of it. Okay. We are using different business models to be effective and to achieve what is our business strategy in different states in the country. There is no one business model that we are pursuing. If I wanted to um, vacate, I would have sold the brand. You're right. So why we not sold the brand and why do we have a time-bound contract on our franchise uh, contracts with different players? It's because I want to reserve the right to take it back if I believe that there is a sudden windfall opportunity that I want to be a part of. Now, the way we are managing uh, states that we have uh, franchised out is we are managing it for profit. But we have an eye on the volume and if we feel that, you know, the volume is eroding sharply or something, we will then uh, work with that franchisee to make sure it doesn't happen. In states which are strategic for us, we are not losing market share, just to be very clear, right? In our priority states, we are not losing market share. In fact, we are growing our business, right, in our priority states. Now, there is a set of states in the middle, which are states which we wanted to franchise, but we have not been able to franchise where... You know, we can only franchise it bit by bit when we find the right franchise partners, right? And that's where there is this little bit of instability. I just want to make it clear that in our strategic states, we have created a separate sales force dedicated to sell the popular business. That is how important it is for this, for this business, right? I haven't just left it there uh, for it to kind of uh, wither away. So I just want to get this notion very, very clear in your mind that we are not vacating. This is alternative business models to achieve our strategic objectives. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Mehul Desai from IDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, good afternoon. So this is Harith here from IDFC. Uh, just had a couple of questions. First thing was on the route to market. Uh, you know, you mentioned Punjab and UP. So if you could just uh, clarify whether Punjab and UP are, I mean, Punjab especially is already the change is happening or you expect it to happen in 4Q as well as on the UP part. When do you expect that to start kicking in? So, so let me first make it clear. So Haryana actually issued a notification. Yeah. Okay. So Haryana is likely to go, but then there are murmurs within the government, will it, won't it, will it, won't it, etc., etc., right? But as of now, we are expecting it to go cooperation. Okay. Punjab will normally follow Haryana. What we do know for a fact in Punjab is that the cabinet uh, of uh, Punjab uh, and following that, the chief minister made a statement saying there will be a change of route to market and it is likely to go the cooperation route. Right? Now, that's as hard as we have, but we don't have a formal notification from the state of Punjab. As far as UP is concerned, all our conversations with uh, the bureaucracy in UP, in the excise department and so on, and actually senior ministers in UP, uh, we have got confirmation that it is going to happen, that there's going to be a change of the existing monopoly model, and it's going to most likely move to either a corporation model, or it's going to move to a more democratic number of wholesalers right. compared to the monopoly that is there today right now this is what we are hearing right i believe that the probability of a change happening in both punjab and up is is high right but then you have to watch this space huh, as we are watching it too yeah absolutely uh, on the and both on all these changes uh, in your view could possibly be effective first april right that's our understanding because that's the new excise year. Uh, the Haryana notification is very clear, right, about 1st April. Therefore, we've taken hard calls on on um, what we're doing to manage credit risk and so on and so forth, right? Punjab, there is no hard date yet. So we're just playing cautious and trying to collect any old outstandings we have so that we're not caught uh, on the wrong foot, right? UP for the moment is business as usual, but there is some downstocking that the current monopoly wholesaler is doing also in anticipation of a possible change. Okay. Okay. Understood. Understood. And uh, uh, the second question, uh, you know, was on the uh, uh, 
price increases. Now, uh, would it be clear to assume that the only price increase left to flow through in our numbers uh, is the one in Telangana? The rest of it would have reflected in 3Q? So, uh, Telangana has to fully reflect into the future. Um, I'm not sure if AP was fully reflected in the quarter or not. Uh, we'll have to just see what is the effective date and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and most of the others would have reflected in the quarter. Having said that, right, there's a new exercise cycle starting 1st April. And we are aggressively working with state governments to get price increases now in other states as well. So, it might not impact this um, uh, fiscal, India's fiscal, right. Um, um, but uh, coming come April, we should be seeing more states beginning to give price increases that will help next fiscal. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Himan Shusha from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So just one question. Uh, are we anticipating any change at the retail level in any of these states? So, um, in none of these states, no. So, West Bengal is the same retail, uh, Haryana, same retail, Punjab, same retail, UP, private retail, but there may be some changes in terms of who are the uh, people who own the retail, right? Um, there has been a change in retail in Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. So, in my opening comments, I talked about six states in RTM change. Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh has been done already. And Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh, there has been a change to government retail. Okay. So, um, but outside of this six states, we are not forcing uh, 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 in any other markets, whether government taking over retail or any other changes? Well, there's not, uh, no, no. We're not uh, anticipating government taking over retail. And there aren't many more states left to become corporation now, really, after this. So, you know, hopefully at some point this has to stop. Okay. Uh, no issue, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot. That's Thank it you. from Thank my you. Side. Thank you. Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Anuj Pansal from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, I just wanted to understand um, when West Bengal had change in route to market, we possibly didn't see too much impact on the numbers. But with Haryana now uh, changing the route to market, there has been a perceptible uh, impact. So has there been any difference in the way the two states have handled uh, the change? And... Uh, also, going forward, what's your anticipation in terms of Punjab, UP? Is it likely to be more the West Bengal way or more the Haryana way? See, West Bengal was unique in the sense that, uh, or different, because West Bengal had a distributor model, which is like the FMCG distributor model, and there was zero credit. So we had zero credit risk in West Bengal during the transition, right? That's a very, very important difference. Now, having said that, was there no impact of the transition in West Bengal? Not true. There was impact. Because retailers were getting credit from distributors earlier. Today, retail has to buy on cash in advance, make a RTGS transfer to the corporation and then go and pick up their stock. Right? So the whole finan finances of the retailers, uh, they've had to bring in more money. They've had to go and pick up the stock themselves. There was door delivery happening earlier, etc., etc. So there has been a short-term impact in the... Uh, during the transition, but then the impact has been phased over a long period of time. Upcountry West Bengal uh, moved into uh, what they call Bevco now, the beverage corporation, over a period of three, four, five months. And Calcutta Metro has happened now over the last couple of weeks. Okay, so they spread out the the the, the transition in the state, so you didn't see the whole state moving overnight. So that's the fundamental difference between a Haryana. Right, where you have a credit risk and therefore you're going slow. And these are private parties, right, who will run away. So if you want to be sure that you're able to collect your money. That is true in Punjab as well. Now in UP, it's one party. Okay, so, you know, you can decide whether the credit risk is lower or higher, but it's one party. And, uh, but we believe that party is big enough and has enough skin in the game for the future as well through retail and other uh, avenues. To, uh, to actu where actually we'll be able to manage the risk a bit more. But the transition of the amount of pipeline that a monopoly wholesaler or wholesaler is carrying, when it moves to a different model, pipelines tend to shrink and then rebuild back when it goes to the new model. And that transition we have to be able to manage in any route to market change. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
We will take the last question from the line of Chanchan Khandelwal from Birla Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks. Most of my questions have been answered. Just one thing, if I look at nine uh, months... So you're not audible. Can you be a little loud? Hello, is it better now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, hi. So most of my questions have been answered. Just one thing, if I look at realization per case, uh, by that I mean if I look at nine month realization per case for prestige, it is just up 2.8%, whereas popular is up 8%. So can you just explain it to me? Because uh, if premiumization is happening, I thought this would, uh, and the price increase you have got, this would have been a better number. And also in popular, do you account for the franchise fee? Is that the reason the realization per case is up 8%? So why don't we do one thing? We'll uh, take away this question, and if you can just connect with Richard, we will give you as much clarity as we can. Uh, work it through and just explain it back to you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. If you just send an email, we'll uh, try and get you a response. Thank you. That was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anand Kripalu for closing comments. Well, I just want to thank all of you for the uh, time that you've taken to join this call and also the incisive questions. Um, you know, like I said earlier. Um, we're not happy with our top line performance this quarter, as indeed neither of you are. Uh, but we're really pleased about the progress of our P&L and the shape of our P&L. Uh, and we do believe that this business has never been stronger. And once we're done with some of these uh, short-term uh, changes that happen in this industry, uh, I think we are going to have a period of uh, stability and, and, and hopefully far stronger consistent performance. Um, so that's what I just wanted to say. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of United Spirits Limited, that concludes this conference call for today. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.